Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Um, today we're going to be discussing something very serious, very delicate, and very, very, very important. If you are studying with the Jehovah's Witnesses organization, if you plan on becoming a baptized Jehovah's Witness, or if you're a current Jehovah's Witness, like I am, I'm an inactive witness, but I'm a good witness in good standing nonetheless. But this is just one more reason why it's so dangerous. It's so incredibly dangerous to become a Jehovah's Witness. And I say that with all due respect, because I have many, many friends that are still Jehovah's Witnesses. But as you can see here, I have a document that was compiled about different teachings and over the years from the Jehovah's Witness leaders. I've highlighted this one specifically on the blood, the use of blood, and I just want to go over a few things and then we're going to consider an article, one of the many, many articles online about brothers and sisters dying because of these rules and policies that the Jehovah's Witness leaders impose on their members and say that they come from the Bible. But as you will see in this document, perhaps you've already read it, as I've been speaking, it, it's impossible that these come from the Bible because the Bible doesn't change God does not change and certainly if the Jehovah's Witness organization the leaders claim to be a spirit led organization how is it possible that it, these changes have been made time and time again but let's look. Taking a firm stand on the medical use of blood fractions procedures. Back in 1940, the magazine Consolation was actually, it's actually the Awake magazine that we have today, okay, which is this one here. But back in 1940, blood transfusions were acceptable, and that can be found in the 1940 Consolation, the December issue. And you can take note of this. This is a huge document, document which covers many, 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 many teachings that have been reversed, that have been, have gone back and forth, okay? And it highlights and references all the publications where you can find these, and it's uh, pretty shocking. But the reason I'm talking about the blood fractions is because this here specifically deals with an individual's life. Notice here in 1945, the blood transfusions were accept are not acceptable now. But yet, back in 1940, just five years prior, they were acceptable. And God somehow deemed them acceptable. I guess the spirit changed his mind, I'm not sure. And I say that with all due respect, I say it with a very serious, serious uh, tone because it's basically what they're doing. Everything they say, the, the Jehovah's Witness leaders say they're not inspired, but yet they'll thank Jehovah for everything. You can't have it both ways, okay? And that's what people keeps people you know, going to them, searching out this organization. But notice, this was the, this is not, they were not acceptable, they became unacceptable in the Watchtower of 1945, the January edition, okay? And then we move on to clotting factors, okay? So the blood transfusion from 1945 and on were not acceptable. If you happen to have an accident prior to 1945, and a blood transfusion was available in your locality 
and you were fortunate enough to accept one, to have one available, then you were saved. Blood transfusions were not very common back in these days, but they were available nonetheless in many different cities, states, but they were just not as common. But as you will see here, the years continue and the clotting factors, albumin, hemoglobin, stored blood, and other things, somehow God deemed in the awake of September 8th, 1956, that they were not acceptable. These clotting factors were not acceptable. Okay, two years later, the Spirit of God changed his mind and God changed his mind again and wrote in the Watchtower the September 15th, 1958 that they were acceptable. As a matter of fact, there's a quote here. An individual is not disfellowshipped for having voluntarily taken a blood transfusion. And this is actually the same year except this is from August. This was a no, I'm not quite sure what QFR means. Could be the qu a quarterly report or something. Perhaps the the um, the ministerial the the, the minister. Uh, I I don't really know. I tell you the truth, but this was written in the '58, and uh, I'll find out what this is and put it in the description. But nonetheless. Here it says yes, and here this one agrees, and then two years, three years later, God changed his mind again and said no. Blood clotting factors are not acceptable, and they published this in the Watchtower September 15, 1961. So God again changed his mind. The spirit changed his mind because they've always been a spirit-led organization. So you can't claim one and then say, oh, no, 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 we're imperfect men just trying to do the will of God. It doesn't work that way. When you say you're breaking a law of God, you're asserting authority, that you have it on authority, that you're saying this based on some sort of authority. And you use the Bible for that. The Jehovah's Witness leaders use the Bible. But somehow, strangely enough, the whatever spirit led them to conclude that no, then they become yes here again. And three years later, it changed, they changed their mind again. God changed their mind, I guess. The spirit must have backtracked somehow. And back in the watchtower of November 15, 1964, then all of a sudden the bloody uh, fact, the 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 clotting factors were acceptable. And if you move forward 11 years later, in the awake of February 22nd, 1975, no, the spirit reversed himself again. The hemophilia treatment has her under the heading, under this heading, in the awake. This is no joke. These are people's lives. These are brothers' lives that were being played with here, that were at stake. And here again, now the clotting factors were acceptable to God in the Watchtower June 15, 1978 issue. Are serum injections compatible with Christian belief? And then, 12 years later, apparently, God enlightened them again, and they had to make some adjustments, and they came out with the blood brochure of 1990. And suddenly, they were enlightened with new light, new adjustments, and the clotting factors were no longer acceptable to God. Fast forward. 14 years and you have God changing his mind again in the Watchtower June 15, 2004 
yes, the clouding factors are acceptable. But you see this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. No, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes. It's it would be comical if it wasn't so sad because there are were lives involved here. Okay. And that's what's more upsetting about this because if you are seriously considering becoming a Jehovah's Witness, I would seriously consider this above all else because this is this issue, this blood issue, is actually something that can affect you one day, but God willing, it won't. And that's when people care. That's when the brothers and sisters and the organization, they start to care when it affects them on a personal level. That's when they start to care about things like this. Otherwise, they say, oh, well, you know, those are imperfect men. The governing body, they're imperfect men, and they're trying their best. Well, if they're trying their best, and they say they're imperfect and not inspired, then they wouldn't call themselves a spirit-led organization when you baptize into that organization. And they wouldn't thank Jehovah for everything, because by thanking Jehovah by thanking God by for everything you are indirectly saying this came from God but let's look at the results of this kind of nonsense here and I say that with all due respect because I have many friends that are still witnesses but let's look at the result of all of this nonsense going back and forth and as of 2004 the clotting factors are acceptable to God that can change may change who knows but let's see what happens when blood which in the Bible and I've already talked about this there's numerous videos where where um other people, other true Christians use the Bible in debunking this blood prohibition in the Bible. That has nothing to do with blood transfusion. It had to do with idolatry worship and the use of blood. But, and God himself, he, he himself told Peter that he made everything clean. And who was Peter to question that? Well, who's the governing body to question that? See, they take scriptures out of context the Jehovah's Witness leaders. But let's look at the result of this nonsense where they say they don't speak for God, but yet they thank God, and thereby the members just believe that it came from God. Here, this was last year, November of 2017. CBC.ca News Refusal of blood transfusion key to deaths of two Jehovah's Witnesses coroner finds. The patients, both mothers of newborns, died within week within a week of each other of childbirth complications. These two lovely ladies were Jehovah's Witnesses. Merland Cadet here and Eloise Dupuy here and it says the caption says they died within a week of each other from complications related to blood loss after giving birth both women were Jehovah's Witnesses a religion that forbids blood transfusions think about that these women gave birth to a child they carried for nine months and now those children will never hear their mother's voice. That's sad. And it breaks my heart. But it goes back to 
this nonsense, this back and forth of these Jehovah's Witness leaders that play with people's lives. If you're uninspired, say so. Don't play semantics, word semantics, okay? Because these are actual people that are dying. Let's go through the through the document here. A Quebec coroner has found that the refusal of blood transfusions played a key role in the deaths of two Jehovah's Witnesses who died of childbirth complications last year. Dr. Luke Mallowen looked into the deaths of Merland Cadet, 46, and Eloise Dupuy, 26, after they died in separate incidents at hospitals in Montreal and Quebec City. Blood transfusions are forbidden under Jehovah's Witness doctrine, which holds that the Old and New Testaments command them to abstain from blood. This has been debunked, and you can see it in some of my other videos and many other um, videos that you can find and websites that clearly debunk the out-of-context scriptures that the Jehovah's Witnesses leaders use to justify this prohibition of blood transfusions. Continuing on, Quebec law upholds the right of adult Jehovah's Witnesses to refuse blood as long as their decision is considered free and informed. And this is another video that I'm going to make because they are not making a, a free and informed decision. They are more or less threatened with disapproval from Jehovah God if they take any blood to save their life. Okay, that's why it's not a free or un or informed decision. This is something that is drilled into their heads, which is false. Continuing on, in his report about Dupuis' case, Mallowin pointed out that sometimes doctors and medical staff find themselves in untenable situations. On the one hand, they have taken the oath to protect and save human life. And on the other hand, they have an obligation to respect their patient's freedom of choice, even if they know that ultimately that choice will kill them when a simple medical treatment could prevent that death. Would rather die than receive blood. Dupuy died of multiple organ failure following major blood loss at Hotel Dieu de la Vie Hospital near Quebec City on October 12th six days after giving birth. Her child, a son, survived. Mallowin said he consulted her medical files and saw that from the beginning of her pregnancy, numerous conversations were had between her and the staff at a birthing, birthing center in Saint Romald, I'm trying to pronounce these correctly, a Quebec City suburb about blood transfusions. Every time she reiterated her refusal to receive one. And again, this goes back to what they're taught and what, what stream of time they find themselves because had they found themselves in years past, in all probability, they would have been saved because the opinions of the Jehovah's Witness leaders, yes, opinions, not doctrine, Bible doctrine because it never changes. The interpretations that people wish to make on them changes, but God doesn't change. They would have lived. The report outlines at least 10 times where Dupuy, her parents, or her partner acting on her wishes refused blood transfusion, including once when she told doctors at Hotel Dewey she would rather die than receive a blood transfusion you know and then people question why the Jehovah's Witness organization is banned in Russia because they take the leaders the governing body discreet slave however you want to address them they take away a person's self-preservation instinct. In other words, they strip you of your 
choice of wanting to survive as a human being. It's no different than what Jim Jones did in Jonestown, Guyana, where mothers purposely poisoned their babies at the behest of Jim Jones, the cult leader. Tell me, is there a difference when you're willing to die because your leaders, the Jehovah's Witness leaders, are telling you that it's in the Bible, so it comes from God? Is there a difference? No. Because life is being extinguished. Voluntarily, voluntarily, you are killing yourself or allowing yourself to die, in this case with blood transfusion. It's no difference. A life is lost. Let's continue. Malouin determined the only thing that could have saved her life was receiving a blood transfusion. Dupuy went into labor October 5th and made her way to the birthing center. Upon her arrival, she once again stated that she did not want to receive any blood transfusion or blood products on account of her faith. Dupuy's son was delivered via cesarean section and survived the birth. Here's a picture of this beautiful young lady that had her whole life ahead of her. Continuing on, complications with the baby's health led to her being transferred to Hotel Dieu, where she eventually gave birth. But in the hours that followed, complications arose, including major bleeding that doctors could not stop. She was transferred to the intensive care unit. Over the following hours and days, Dupuy developed severe anemia, coagulation problems, a rapid heartbeat, lactic acidosis, and had a hysterectomy freedom to choose. Her partner, Paul Andre Roy, released a statement early Tuesday saying Dupuy was an intelligent woman with deep personal beliefs. Yes, but those beliefs came from the minds of the Jehovah's Witness leaders. This intelligent woman did not make decisions based on what she, the conclusion that she made in the Bible. See, that's what people don't understand. That these personal beliefs come from other people. That's not yours. You cannot claim that those beliefs are yours because those beliefs were given to you as a Jehovah's Witness. And that's sad. He said she revisited her decision throughout her pregnancy and during the childbirth process and chose to keep refusing transfusions. Her aunt, Manon Boyer, alleged that Dupuy was pressured into refusing treatment by Jehovah's Witness elders. This is very true because the Jehovah's Witness leaders have created these committees, these health uh, liaison committees that show up whenever a member is in the hospital to make sure that they do not receive any sort of blood in any form. Because they want them to have Jehovah's approval or God's approval. Where does that come from? Where does that teaching come from? You guessed it. The Jehovah's Witness leaders. says, but Roy refuted that notion, saying they provided her with information but never tried to influence her decision. They provided her with information? What information did they need to provide her with? She already knew. She already, she, they could have brought nothing new to her attention because whatever she had learned, she had learned already. So, the only thing that these hospital committees do is they're just there for moral support, but not to save your life. They're there to make sure that you expire and follow through with your dedication to the Jehovah's Witness organization. 
the teachings of the leaders. Again, it's not in the Bible. The only thing you'll find when it comes to blood in the New Testament, because this is not the Old Testament, we're not under the Messiah law, is idolatry worship in relations to blood. The coroner came to the same conclusion, saying he did not believe Dupuy was forced into making her choice. Boyer said she still is convinced her niece was pressured into refusing treatment, pointing out that for her whole life she was discouraged from receiving blood transfusions. And this is true. That, that just seals this, um, the indoctrination this poor woman received all through her life if she, if she grew up in this organization of course it, it would come second nature to her to refuse a blood saving transfusion the caption says Manon Boyer says she is convinced her niece Eloise Dupuy was pressured into refusing a blood transfusion I agree with freedom of religion but not at any price not at that not at the price of a life she said and it's true she also questioned the idea that Dupuy gave free and informed consent due to of the amount of pain and stress she experienced in the last week of her life and then the, the the story moves on to cadet the other uh, woman the second woman died October 3rd, 2016 from complications after giving birth to a healthy baby boy by cesarean section at St. Mary's Hospital. According to the report, she clearly stated when she was admitted that she refused to receive any blood transfusions. After the operation, her vital signs and hemoglobin count began to drop. Her husband reiterated Cadet's wishes not to receive blood to the medical team. Cadet's parents eventually convinced her husband to allow the blood transfusion to go ahead, which it did, only six hours after her vitals began to drop. So, somehow, this poor woman's husband was made to see the common sense and the stupidity of allowing your wife to die and actually changed his mind by the grace of God, but sadly it was too late 30 minutes 10 minutes in a life or death situation is so crucial and he waited 6 hours to finally accede to this transfusion it continues it is impossible for me to determine specifically whether the time required to provide blood products had a significant impact on the death Mellowin said Cadet's condition continued to worsen until she died from respiratory failure at the McGill University Hospital Center. It's impossible for the doctor to determine specifically whether the time required to provide blood products had a significant impact on the death, but as you and I both know, in a life and death situation, the sooner it's done, the better it is. Who knows? I'm, I, I can. I will admit that she may not have survived after all, but her chances of surviving would have definitely been higher had she been provided with this blood when her vitals began to drop. The article continues. Her brother, Isaac Cadet, told CBC News not long after she died that he doubted his sister would have signed a document refusing a blood transfusion. The Quebec Civil Code stipulates that an adult who is of sound mind and well informed has the right to accept or refuse medical treatment. Health Minister Gaetan Barrett said the coroner's report show health officials did all they could to help the two people. However, they cannot overstep the, overstep the patient's rights. We live in a society of freedoms and religious rights, Barrett said. There's a difference between living in a society of freedom and religious rights and being fully indoctrinated and made to view certain things a certain way. 
especially if you if your parents as you were a child or perhaps were born and your parents were already Jehovah's Witnesses, you didn't have a choice but to listen to the indoctrination and the propaganda of the Jehovah's Witness leaders. So that was embedded in your mind from a young age. So growing up, you would fall in line just like many other witnesses did and die think about it friend brothers and sisters especially if you're studying or are interested in becoming a Jehovah's Witness this is life and death and this is no laughing matter I thank you for joining me today I hope to see you tomorrow may you have a blessed blessed evening take care